Traveling along the Essex Coastal Scenic Byway. Hammond's Castle. These buildings were planned and constructed by John Hayes Hammond Jr. to house his medieval collection and his laboratory that developed basic inventions of guided missiles and radio communications. We are in the Great Hall, which is designed to give the appearance of a Gothic cathedral. This is thought to be the largest pipe organ in a private residence in this hemisphere.
Between 1930 and 1950, Hammond employed an average of seven people at one time to run his home. The area we are in down here now um, is essentially the staff leisure area and staff kitchen. Here's the staff call system that he had installed. If we go through here, we have the kitchen. Here's his like panless stove that he patented after observing his cooks needing to clean a lot. He made this and essentially you use aluminum foil. Pretty good idea. <laughs> These are the meals that Hammond and his wife often ate. He ate really simple meals because he was too busy inventing. So we just have some peas and saltines. But Mrs. Hammond's got some steak to tar, so that's pretty great. Hammond Castle cookbook. I might have to grab that. It's another one of his patents, magnetic tableware. So, <laughs> between 1955 and 1960, he experimented with the idea of a tilting table. <laughs> Here's another patent for a magnetic mixer. It's pretty cool. Hammond, the domestic inventor. Here he is with his magnetic placeware. Magnetop bottle opener, another patent by him. Wow. Look at that mural. Pretty cool round room. Hammond's radio controlled ships. In the courtyard, very Isabel Stewart Gardner like. And he has an indoor rain system that he installed so it could rain on his guests. We're in the dining room now, composed of Renaissance pieces. This is where the Hammonds held dinner parties. Amazing. This is the Gothic guest room designed to recreate the bedroom of a medieval noble. This was Hammond's room of choice to place guests. We're in Hammond's closet right now. Another good view of the courtyard.
Look at this, a painting by Mrs. Hammond, which is a reproduction of All is Well by Winslow Homer. Hammond and Irene both adored cats, owning almost a dozen while living at the castle. <laughs> Here we go. Irene was a talented artist. He also owned several dogs. Poofy, Boris. <laughs> Wait, the first Boris was dog-napped in 1936 and held for $1,000 in ransom. Oh my God. Wow, these are all of his patents. <sighs> he said he had over 400, so. What was his last one? Communication system utilizing selective sweep pattern. Wow. We are in the library. We're here in Marblehead for the sunrise at the Chandler Hovey Park. This is Marblehead Light, which went into service October 10th, 1835, because Marblehead's large harbor became an important center for trade and fishing by the early 1800s. A fun fact, Ezekiel Darling, the first keeper, was a former gunner on the USS Constitution. Pretty cool. Here we go, Marblehead Light Keepers. There's Ezekiel Darling, the first keeper. Here's a little timeline from 1831 when the town petitioned Congress for the lighthouse. $4,500 approved. 1833, the town bought the land all the way down to 1960 when the light was automated. Very cool. I like this that they did with the timeline. I think that's cool. It's a great spot here in Marblehead. Free? Cool. <laughs> Man 
Manchester by the Sea. The opening shots for the movie um, actually include this church and Main Street here. I actually lived in Manchester by the Sea for a few months. Um, it's nice to be back. Seaside number one station, which was the first of Manchester's fire stations, constructed in 1885. They've got some old firefighting equipment and vehicles in there. Pretty cool. Manchester by the Sea Meeting House History. My favorite bookstore, Manchester by the Book. Classic. We have our Greater Cape Ann map. So Cape Ann encompasses Essex, Gloucester, Ipswich, Manchester by the Sea, and Rockport. And after this, later on, we'll be in Salem as well. We're in Manchester by the Sea. Currently, And here we are at Singing Beach in Manchester by the Sea. Absolutely a gorgeous beach. The commuter rail goes right through most of these North Shore towns, including Manchester by the Sea. This is the burial ground in Manchester by the Sea, 1661. Sarah Lee, wife of Jacob Allen, died July 1765. Here lies buried the body of Captain David Lee. We are in uh, Magnolia, which is a small village within Gloucester. After the Civil War, Bostonians began a summer here. The dawn of the 20th century it was a vacation destination. The Oceanside Hotel and Casino, before it burnt down, attracted really big names. Uh, Lucille Ball also used to vacation here. So yeah, Magnolia. Gloucester Fisherman's Memorial. They that go down to the sea in ships. Let's check this out. The loss of over 5,300 men. Some were overtaken by the howling winds and mountainous seas of ca catastrophic northeaster. Some met their fate in the solitude of a small dory gone astray from the schooner that brought them to the banks. Some ships collided in storms and tragically sank. Others were run down by steamers and shipping lanes. Oh my god. Men known to be lost at sea and honored here, 5,368. Wow. Shout out to all the widows as well. Between 1860 and 1906, 660 ships sank. And we have all the names. Starting in 1716. And at the very end, in 1991, we have the crew of the Andrea Gale, which the movie Perfect Storm was based on. They all were lost in, a, in that crazy storm, 1991.
the world's largest lobster trap <laughs> here on the pier in Gloucester. The crow's nest in Gloucester. This is where the crewmates of the Andrea Gale would often hang out and uh, it's depicted in the movie Perfect Storm as well. We're here at the Eastern Point Lighthouse in Gloucester. And Winslow Homer actually lived here in 1880. I am related to Winslow Homer, as I say in all my videos, and I'm obnoxious about it. You can see the city. Just over there. The paper house at Pigeon Cove, Mass, made of Boston newspapers that Mr. Ellis F. Stedman began in 1922. The walls, when finished, consist of 215 thickness. 10,000 copies of newspapers have been used in the construction of the house and the furniture. Wow. Got a desk. This desk gives accounts of Charles Lindbergh's flight. Got a bookcase containing foreign papers. This piano is covered with rolls of paper. And all along the ceilings and the walls, grandfather clock made of newspapers from all the capitals in the United States. And the mantle made of sections of Sunday papers.
Straits Mouth Island, Rockport. In Rockport is motif number one, which is a replica of the 1840 fishing shack, which was known as one of the most frequently painted buildings in North America. It was destroyed in like the blizzard of 78, I think, but then this replica was created. at the Essex Shipbuilding Museum. Let's go check it out. Wow, launched in 1927. This is nuts. So you can make old-fashioned trunnels, which were wooden nails used for the shipbuilding. And I just made it. My trunnel. That was awesome. on the Essex Coastal Scenic Byway. Castle on the Hill. Ipswich Museum. Here's a great map of our whole North Shore adventure all the way up. It's Castle Hill. 
motif in Rockport, Gloucester, Manchester by the Sea, Singing Beach, Hammond Castle. We love it. Lynn Swamp Scott, the best of the North Shore. Ipswich Downtown River Walk. The Ipswich River in the Upper Falls flows some 45 miles from its origin in Burlington, Mass. To the ocean at Plum Island Sound. Making the way up. This is the inn at Castle Hill, which I've always wanted to stay at. Can't afford it, you know. <laughs> and I'm a trustees member, so I got in today for free, which is always cool. My girlfriend got me a trustees membership for Christmas. Built in 1928. Crane Estate here on 165 acres in Ipswich. Just a little bit about the house. The Cranes built the 59-room mansion to replace their first home. Crane family of Chicago hired architect David Adler to design the great house. Here's the plaque. So that's one of my favorite beaches of all time, Crane Beach, which is also a trustee's property adjacent to Crane Estate and Castle on the Hill. Um, Little Women, there were scenes filmed there as well as here, which I'll show you. These are like the rolling lawns that go down. Got a bit of a tour group here. There's the front of the house. V.C. Andrews, Flowers in the Attic. The 1987 adaptation was filmed here great movie. So it's lined with uh, with these statues all down and normally this grass is like gorgeous and lush but Massachusetts is going through a crazy drought right now so it's definitely affected. So right down here maybe I'll include screen grabs is where they filmed Little Women the 2019 one for the European scenes because this is very European looking. Let's continue down. So this was the angle for when they were in Europe in Little Women. I'll include the I'll include the scene. All right, we walk to the end here. The casino complex the most distinctive Italian style architecture that survives from the Crane's first building campaign. Crane family rose garden.
part of the wild garden designed by the Olmsted brothers, of course. Olmsted designed everything. So this is really cool. Pivot rock. Mr. Crane was a jokester. There's a rock allowing people to pass through the trail, making it appear that he was strong enough to move it. Secretly, a rod implanted in the rock. Allowed to pivot with little effort. <laughs> Take a seat. Crane Beach Picnic in 1911, still an annual tradition. Crane Beach, love it. Honestly, one of the best beaches in New England. Maybe my favorite, could, could be the best. The clam box, Ipswich. Do you have the stuff you want to get? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so fish and swag with fish fries and onions. Anything else? Something to drink. 